Welcome to Advent at Central Presbyterian Church. We are so delighted to have you with us. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Let us pray. Loving and gracious God, we ask that you would give us eyes, your eyes, to see you. Although we are scattered apart, let us see one another as one body gathered together in you. Although we have differences of opinion, let us see what is common between us, sisters and brothers in Christ. And finally, God, wherever we find separations in our world, let us see the world as you do, whole and perfect and unified in you. We pray this in your holy name. Alleluia. Amen. Prophet said, I will stand at my watch post and station myself on the rampart. I will keep watch to see what the Lord will say to me and what he will answer concerning my prayer. Advent is a time to prepare for Christ's coming, to keep awake, to stay alert, to watch. As we light the first candle on the Advent wreath, we pray for new eyes to see Jesus at work in our lives and in our world. At the beginning of worship today, we lit the first candle on the Advent wreath. It shines bright and reminds us of the long wait ahead. Well, I don't know about you, but I don't love to wait. Waiting is hard. Whenever it's hard to wait, I can ask God for help. God, please make me patient. And God promises to answer that prayer with a little bit of nearness, a little bit of closeness. I think that's one of the coolest things about God, that when we call on God, God is right there. And so whether it's waiting for Christmas to come or something even harder, God is with us no matter what. Let's pray. God of love and God of grace, as we enter Advent, the time of waiting, help us to be patient, help us to be kind, and help us to always remember that you are living with us. Alleluia. Amen. 
the peace of Christ. It's a gift to us this day and every day, a gift from the Holy Spirit, and a gift for us to share. And so we invite you to pick up your phone, to go for a walk, to wave hello to a neighbor, and to share Christ's peace with one another. The peace of Christ be with you and with your spirit. Alleluia. Amen. Good morning. We're glad that you're joining us for this service of worship today as we begin the season of Advent. And we hope that you feel connected to our community of faith as we worship together. And we hope that you feel connected to God. For God is here with us. The promise of Advent. Emmanuel. God with us. You know, we have been worshiping throughout this pandemic, and we plan to continue to worship every Sunday. And you will continue to find our worship on HTTV, Facebook, and YouTube at 10 o'clock on Sunday morning and throughout the week to follow. We hope that you will continue to watch us there virtually. We also hope that you will sign up for emails from Central Church so that we can keep you up to date on what's happening when we move back inside the sanctuary for in-person worship. All the things that we'll be doing through Christmas, we hope that you'll sign up for those emails so that you can know about all of those activities. You can sign up for the emails easily by uh, going uh, by emailing Evelyn Thiel at centralpres.org in her church office, and she'll be happy uh, to sign you up. And you also can check us out on our website uh, and find out current news from Central Presbyterian Church. There are a couple of things I want to draw your attention. First of all, beginning at 11 o'clock this morning, you're invited to register uh, for a class that Dr. Charity Wicks, our music director, and I will be teaching based on Handel's beloved Messiah. We'll be looking at the scripture text and at the musical text uh, together, and you're invited to join us. You need to register so that we can send you a link, because this study will be happening on Zoom, 
and uh, we invite you to join us. Each uh, study begins uh, at 11 o'clock on the Sunday mornings during Advent, and they'll end by noon. Hope that you'll join us for that study. Later this week, we'll be wrapping up our sharing tree, and so if you've been a part of, of that, we encourage you to get your gifts into the church so that we can get them along to the families in our area that will be helping uh, to celebrate Christmas this year. I also want to bring to your attention that we will begin tonight at 4.30 uh, and continue every Sunday evening at 4.30 throughout Advent, a uh, short time together outside, uh, and we invite you to come for that. We'll be hearing some Christmas carols from our wonderful new carillon. We'll be lighting the Advent wreath. You can stay in your car uh, for this time together, or you can get out if you wish, but we'll be uh, gathering outside the north classroom entrance of the church. We invite you to come. That's 4.30 tonight and every Sunday in Advent, 4.30. We invite you to come for that service. We're also working on some plans to be outside for worship on Christmas Eve. Uh, that service we're planning will begin at 4 p.m. Again, you can come and stay in your car if you're more comfortable. We'll be hearing music out of our carillon, wonderful Christmas music. We'll also be um, having a, a brief uh, pageant presenting the story of Jesus' birth that will involve some of our families. And in the end, what we're going to do is, from our carillon, we will be playing Silent Night. And you'll be invited to light a candle so that we can keep that beloved tradition alive, even this Christmas, even in the midst of all of this. We hope that you'll plan to join us for all of these Advent gatherings and Christmas Eve gatherings in the coming weeks. Again, we're really glad that you're here with us this morning and hope that this worship service is a blessing in your life. God bless. This morning's scripture lesson is taken from the Gospel of Mark. We're in the 13th chapter, and I'm beginning to read to you at the 24th verse. Listen and hear God's word. But in those days, Jesus said, the sun will be darkened, and the moon will not give its light, and the stars will be falling from heaven, and the powers in the heavens will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in clouds with great power and glory. Then he will send out the angels and gather his elect from the four winds, from the four ends of the earth to the ends of heaven. From the fig tree, learn its lesson. As soon as its branch becomes tender and put forth its leaves, you know that summer is near. So also when you see these things taking place, you know that He is near, at the very gates. Truly, I tell you, this generation will not pass away until all these things have taken place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. But about that day or hour, no one knows, neither the angels in heaven, nor the Son, but only the Father. Beware, keep alert, for you do not know when the time will come. It is like a man going on a journey when he leaves home and puts his slaves in charge each with his own work, and he commands the doorkeeper to be on watch. Therefore, keep awake, for you do not know when the master of the house will come, in the evening, or at midnight, or at cockcrow, or at dawn, or else he may find you asleep when he comes suddenly. And what I say to you, I say to all, keep awake. May God bless to our understanding this reading of God's holy word, and to God's name, be glory and praise. Amen.
Frederick Buechner, the Presbyterian minister who's also an award-winning novelist, wrote a, about a real-life experience he had when he went to visit, visit a widow of a friend of his who had died just a couple months before. Beekner and his wife were going to spend the night with her, and that night while he was sleeping, he had a dream in which his friend appeared to him, standing there in the guest room, dressed like he always dressed, in a blue, navy blue sweater and some white pants. Beekner told his friend how much he missed him. And he said it was good to see him again. But then Beekner asked, are you really there? And his friend replied that he was. And then Beekner asked for some proof. And so his friend took a strand of blue wool from a sweater and handed it to Beekner. And Beekner took it between his thumb and his finger and he said that the feel of it was so real that it woke him up. Well, the next day at breakfast, Beekner told about his dream. And no sooner had he finished telling about the dream than his wife said to him, you know, I saw a little strand of navy blue wool on the carpet this morning up in the guest room. She said it was odd because I didn't notice it there the night before. And so Beekner bounded up the stairs. And sure enough, there on the carpet was this strand of navy blue wool. Now Beekner is quick to say that that experience, it doesn't prove a thing. There are all sorts of perfectly reasonable explanations for how that strand of navy blue wool got on the carpet in his friend's guest room. It all simply could have been a coincidence. But then again, as Peter says, maybe not. I mean, somebody has said that coincidences are God's way of remaining anonymous. And maybe that's true. Maybe coincidences aren't just coincidences at all. But maybe there's there are signs that there's something more to life. As Beekner put it, the coincidences could be momentary glimpses into a mystery of such depth and power and beauty that if we were to see it head on, we would be annihilated. Keep away, Jesus commanded his followers. Watch, be alert, because, as Jesus went on to say, some crazy things are going to happen in the world. The sun and the moon are going to darken. The, sky, the stars are going to fall from the sky, which was just Jesus' way of saying, by using the language of the Hebrew prophets, that his disciples were going to face some crazy times in their lives. That was going to happen. But keep away. Watch. Be alert. Because in the midst of all of that craziness, God was going to come to them. God comes to us in the midst of all the crazy times of our lives. Only if we're not awake, if we're not alert, if we're not watching, we might miss God's coming. Because God comes in these ways that are quiet, surprising, unexpected, like in the budding of leaves on a tree, or in a dream, in a strange bedroom, or in a little piece of navy blue yarn. So keep awake. Watch. Be alert, Jesus commanded his followers, to what it is that God is doing in your life, in the world around you, 
Because if you don't stay awake, stay alert, if you don't watch, you might miss what God is doing. For there is this mystery at the core of life. And this mystery is so profoundly deep and powerful and beautiful. And God will give you glimpses of it. God will give you glimpses if only you stay awake and alert and if only you watch. God will give you glimpses. Maybe more than any of us suspect. I mean, think of it in your own life. Think how your life has been shaped in profound ways by moments of complete serendipity. That is, by moments that you in no way planned. How you met your spouse. The twists and turns your career path has taken that has landed you where you are today. The schools you went to, the neighborhoods where you live, where you met the people who are your closest friends today. All these moments of serendipity, all of these unplanned events, and yet all of them, all of them shaping your life more profoundly than probably anything you planned. And all of those moments are compounded by all the simple little coincidences that happen to all of us each day, day by day. Maybe just coincidences. But then again, maybe not. Maybe signs that there's more to life than we ever dreamt possible. You know, this Christmas is going to be different than any Christmas any of us have probably experienced. Because the world around us is crazy. But in saying that this Christmas is going to be different, I don't mean to say that this Christmas necessarily is going to be a bad one. In fact, it might be a really good one. Because so many Christmases, we all experience the pressure, the stress, as we try to do all the preparations and go to all the parties and celebrations. It can be exhausting. But maybe this Christmas, there won't be so much of that. And so maybe this Christmas, we'll actually be able to focus on our lives, on our world. And maybe God will give us this incredible gift, namely, new eyes. So that beyond all the unplanned, serendipitous moment, beyond all the times of coincidence, with our new eyes, maybe we'll be able to see God. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Forgetting my sorrows, forgetting my shame You took it from me, and now I'm not the same I know You saved my soul
from your victory and I'm God, we pray for all of those who struggle today, who are going through difficult times with illness, with sadness, with worry, all of those who feel themselves to be alone in the world, with no friends, all of those whose lives seem to be filled with disappointment. Gracious God, we pray that you would be near and that you would use us. Use us as signs of your love and your compassion for all of those who struggle this day. And gracious God, we pray that as we move through this holiday season, that we would know the holiness that lives in the quiet moments of our lives. The holiness that lives in the moments of surprise. The holiness that lives when the unexpected happens. For gracious God, you promise that we are enveloped in holiness. In your presence, O oh God with us, Emmanuel, hear us, for we pray these things in Jesus' name, as together we pray the prayer that we were taught. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. 
and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever. Amen. You know, Christmas is a time when we think about giving gifts. And I hope that during this season of as we approach Christmas, that you'll be thinking about the gifts you want to give to those who are in need, the gifts that you want to give to this congregation. Because this congregation stands on a foundation of the gifts that we receive from people like you. And it's easy to make a gift to Central Presbyterian Church. You can do it online, going to our website, going down to the Give Plus tab, clicking on it and following the instructions there. Really quick, easy instructions to follow. Or you can give us a gift by sending us a check at 70 Maple Street here in Summit, and we'll receive it. Either way, I encourage you to think about giving a gift, and giving a gift to Central Presbyterian Church. God bless you. Amen.